And I bid you all grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It is good to be with you. This is Thursday, September the 10th year of our Lord, 2020. And we gather again to have a little devotion uh, around one of the readings from last Sunday's uh, assigned lectionary. So today we're going to take a look at the passage from the prophet Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. And if you remember again back to last Sunday's gospel reading, where Jesus talked about the care for the little ones, the tag end of last Sunday's reading was Jesus saying, if someone sins against you, you have to go and tell them that sin between you and them alone. And if they listen to you, they repent and you've won them back. And the whole point there is not about congregational discipline as such. It's not, you know, here's the steps you have to follow in order to be able to tell someone to shove off, but rather here's all the things you need to do to hold on to one of the little ones that Christ has redeemed because we understand that unrepentant sin is a faith killer, right? If we have a sin that we keep on justifying, that we refuse to confess, that we refuse to acknowledge, it is going to erode at faith. It's going to be a, uh, a, a block that cuts us off from the grace and mercy and love of God because, again, it gives us a bad conscience, right? You know, if I know that I have this sin in me and it is cutting me off from God, I also know God's not pleased with me and it tends to make me a little bit shy around God. So the whole point that of calling people to repentance is not about, oh, you bad person, now you better shape up and, and, and fly right, but rather it's the you're dearly loved of God, there is this great life, this gift that is for you, come back into the light and, and don't dwell in the shadow lands. So one or two others, uh, if they don't listen to you, and then if they won't listen to one or two others, you go to the whole congregation. Again, the point of the whole congregation is not you're an awful person, but we don't want to lose you. Repent and come back. And so with that in mind, then the Old Testament reading is about uh, Ezekiel and his call to be a watchman for Israel and to speak the word that the Lord gives him. So we'll read from uh, Ezekiel 33 verses 7 through 9. It's kind of short reading, so we won't have a, a super long devotion today. Um, and I'll have a couple of words to share with you. So this is Ezekiel 33, starting at verse 7. So you, son of man, I've made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, you shall hear a word from my mouth and shall warn them for me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require in your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Now, so obviously there's the vibe about going and telling the wicked, knock it off and, and, and turn around and get back with God. I, I think the other thing here is obviously Ezekiel's office as a watchman is unique. It's not the same as the uh, rest of us occupy. Uh, this verse oftentimes gets read at, at ordinations, reminding us that in the pastoral office, one of the functions that pastors serve is as a watchman to the congregation where God's word written down in scripture is a kind of marching order given to pastors where they have to let the congregation know, look, this is what God said, this is what God wants, knock off doing what God tells you not to do. And if the pastor doesn't discharge his duty to speak that word forthrightly and boldly and to warn the wicked from their way, then he's really defective in the office and there is an accounting for that. But of course, Jesus' verse covers everything. So we're all repentant sinners, we're all kind of in the same boat on that uh, account. Now, one of the things that's interesting is that in the prophet Ezekiel, God constantly refers to Ezekiel as, as son of man. And in the Hebrew, it's actually son of Adam, right? And Adam is the, the generic word for a human being, but it's also obviously the name of the first human being that God created. And I think that reminder that we are all children of Adam, children of Eve, is, is a reminder that we come from kind of a broken stock. We're all uh, come from a, a humanity that was broken by the sin of Adam and Eve. And so there's a certain sense in which there's none of us who is higher or lower than another. We're all kind of in the same boat needing to repent. We're all in the same boat finding that we are sinful. We are all in the same boat finding that there is kind of a, a corruption in our hearts that turns us away from the way of God. So the whole message that Ezekiel is giving then is not, I'm a righteous prophet and you all are bad people, but it's I'm one sinner talking to other sinners. 
And in the same way that I repent of my sin, you, you need to repent of yours, O son of man. And then he always says, you know, I give you to Israel as a watchman. So it, it's not um, that Ezekiel took the office to himself, and it's not that the office was created by uh, a community resolution. Rather, Yahweh's gracious gift to his people is one who will speak his word. Um, now, sometimes those words aren't words that we want to hear, uh, and there's the temptation in our old nature inherited from Adam to cover our ears and go, la, 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 I don't hear what you're saying. But again, the spokesmen that are given to us are a gift of God to keep us in grace, to keep us in his word, to keep us in his way. So I give you, and, and therefore you, you bear this responsibility. If you don't warn people that they're in danger, then when danger comes upon them, I'm going to require that at your hand. On the other hand, if you warn them and they don't listen to you, it's on their head. And, and again, that doesn't mean that uh, Ezekiel's happy about that, because one of the fundamental words that's spoken to Ezekiel is God does not desire the death of sinners, but that they turn and live. But sometimes, no matter how much you try to warn a person from away, some people are just bound and determined to go ahead and, and reap uh, the bitter rewards of following away that, that leads into death and into darkness. Um, so the last thing to note here is uh, God says, when I speak a word to you, right, you become my spokesman. And there's a nice little vibe in the Hebrew um, where the word for to speak and the word for word are cognates. They have the same root. So um, I give you a word and then you word that to them is what uh, God is telling Ezekiel. And, I think that gives us a good image of what's going on in the church, right? We have the word that God has spoken to us in scripture, and then we word that to each other, both during service, as we encourage one another, as we hear lessons in Bible class, as uh, pastors who are being faithful to their duty preach to us, it is that word that is being handed on to us so that we can be shaped and molded into the fullness of the restored image that God has made for us in our Lord and Savior Jesus. All right, that's enough for today. Tomorrow we'll join you. Uh, we'll take a look at the uh, epistle reading from Romans. We're still working our way through that. And we'll have the litany. And then uh, you know, we'll have a remembrance for 9-11. Uh, we know that's still a, a painful anniversary for a lot of folks. But I think there is uh, something important for us to uh, grasp in that as well. Not just, oh gosh, something really horrible happened. But also look at the good that God did that day uh, through so many others. But that's tomorrow. Until then, peace be with you all.